from Thunder Bowl in Council Bluffs, Iowa, near Omaha. ESPN brings you live coverage of the Denny's PBA Tour 2005 Greater Omaha Classic. It's Dave Ryan with Randy Peterson. We are joined by four finalists, including Wes Malott. He continues his incredible hot streak by making history today. Now our four are ready to roll. Last week, he captured his first Denny's PBA Tour title, making his fourth straight TV Finals appearance from Austin, Texas, Big Wes Malott. Wes is riding a tidal wave of fame and fortune these days. He imposed his will on Pete Weber and Walter Ray Williams Jr. in match play. Oh, and by the way, averaged a medieval 248 en route to the big show. He's a two-time National Collegiate Bowler of the Year, and today makes his PBA TV Finals debut from Levittown, Pennsylvania, Bill O'Neill. Bill may be a rookie on tour, but he has the maturity of a seasoned veteran. Don't let his quiet demeanor fool you. He has a burning desire for success, which makes this newcomer a wolf in sheep's clothing. He has four Denny's PBA Tour titles, including the 1994 PBA National Championship. A 24-year tour veteran from Hebron, Illinois, David Traber. David Traber started the second round of this tournament by throwing 23 out of 24 possible strikes. He has his bread and butter ball reaction this week, and he knows he must take full yeah, advantage baby. of the situation. Right. Gotta get this University of Nebraska bowler looks to capture his first Denny's PBA Tour title today from Erie, Pennsylvania, Mike Machuga. Chukes finished second here in 2003 and said he's feeling the mojo, baby. He destroyed best friend and mentor, Norm Duke, in match play and needs only two wins today to capture his holy grail, a tour championship. These are your finalists competing in the 2005 Greater Omaha Classic. one and all the greater omaha council bluffs iowa where the pba returns to the hawkeye state for just the seventh time the all-time leader in tour wins earl anthony won an event in this state back in 1975 now 30 years later the pba is here with four of the world's best ready to compete among them randy peterson the hottest bowl on the planter wet west malott let's check those matchups in semifinal number one West Malott, red hot West Malott, coming off of that win last week, takes on Bill O'Neill, who's bowling in his first ever telecast. And David Traber taking on Mike Machuga. David Traber, the elder statesman. Mike Machuga looking for his first ever win. Dave, let's go down to you. All right, Andy, thanks so much. This is getting to be a familiar sight. West Malott in a fourth straight TV show. Making history, it's never been done before. How do you best describe the feeling of rewriting the history books? You know, Dave, I mean, this is just an unbelievable feeling. And, uh, you know, I'm on this wave, and I'm just going to ride it as long as it goes. It's been fun to watch. Good Thanks. luck to you. Thanks, in contrast, Bill O'Neill has never made a PBA show until today. In the day and a half since you won your round of eight match over Mike Devaney, how would you best describe the feeling of making that first show? It's, this has been amazing. This is kind of a dream come true. The third week out just to, to make the show, it's just unbelievable. Best of luck to you. Thank you. All right. Wes Malott, Bill O'Neill, ready head to head on the chameleon pattern. It's 39 feet long. Yeah, David, quite honestly, this is one of the easiest patterns I've ever bowled on on the PBA Tour. But when I can average almost 240, you know they got to be pretty soft. But basically, there was friction outside and then a very nice blend of oil this way. Basically, the players just decided how much they wanted to hook it. They could either go straight from out or they could feed it into that dry part of the lane. But the bottom line this week, pin carry, it was phenomenal. 12 perfect games this week. Easy to get to the pocket. When you got the right ball in your hand, you struck a lot. First ever TV shot here, Randy. Bill O'Neill, Levittown, Pennsylvania. What a start to his PBA 
career on television. That's the debut you can always remember. You're going to see a lot of that today. The bottom line, Dave, I think the general consensus between the players was in match play, first guy that misses, loses. Lots of big numbers. We saw a moment ago. Russell be going through his mind. First ever TV show. Hottest bowler out here, Wes Milan. With a great start of his own. Leading us to our first of three Ace Hardware matchups, Randy. Yeah, it's a battle of David versus Goliath. We all know what Wes Milan has done the last four events. First time ever for Bill O'Neill. He has to somehow overcome the early nerves, get off to a quick start, put some pressure on Wes Milan. Who's in the pocket? Clears the deck for a second straight time. We saw that 298 in the last game of his epic seven gamer. The round of eight here on Friday at Thunder Bowl in Council Bluffs against Pete Weber. That was a match to remember. It, it really was. I mean, you know, Pete, in my opinion, did everything humanly possible to beat Wes Malott. You know, Pete would strike out to shoot 268. He would force Wes Malott to throw three in the attempt to, to shoot 269. Wes Malott gets up in the attempt and goes bang, 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 wins by one. And that's how their entire match went up until the last game where he threw the front 11, left a blowout 7-10 for 298. Yeah. And a great shot, all 10 down the pit for Bill O'Neill. We saw 24 years old, the youngest player on the PBA Tour. As he makes his TV debut today. And look at who he defeated to get here. Well, an incredible run for Bill O'Neill. E.J. Archer also made the tour trials for him in the round of 32. Eugene McCune and Mike Devaney, and Bill told us last night that after he played Devaney, bowled against him, Mike gave him some good advice. <laughs> Wow. High flush strike. And Bill O'Neill's doing exactly what a first timer needs to do on television get off to a quick start. You know, one of the things that he has to his advantage bowling on this pattern today, the pattern's pretty soft, which means that there's area on the on the, the lane still come back either. to miss and still get your ball to the pocket. You don't have to get up there and try to fit it. And that'll help loosen up your swing early on. Resume for Wes Malott. How about who he again. knocked off to get here? Between Walter Ray Williams Jr. and PDW, Pete Weber, 71 career titles. Both Hall of Famers, and he also knocked off our Tony Reyes. Yeah, and let's not forget Tony Reyes, who made uh, like three telecasts last year. Uh, he, he is definitely no slouch. But you're right, two Hall of Famers, Tony Reyes. I mean, that's a tough road. And you know what? None of this is phasing a guy like Wes Malad, who's on the kind of run that he's on. And a 299 against Patrick Allen, we'll tell you about last week. First game of his Denver Magical run. And a split, the first possible open of our match after all those strikes on this chameleon pattern. What's the approach, Randy? Well, he's got to slide the four over in the nine. But see, here's the one thing that we saw this week. When the lanes did change and they did go through transition, this is what happened. You had to be, you had to be aware of when those changes were going to happen and anticipate the lanes breaking down and move. And right now he's asking for tape, which buys him some extra time. Remember, we have 24 second shot clock where once the ball comes through the ball return, you have to get up and throw another shot. As you can see here, he's trying to get the ball to the left side of the four pin, slide it over into the nine. Good try. And right now, remember what I said earlier, first guy that misses, loses. Hmm. Well, that's the miss. We'll see if that turns out to be detrimental to Wes Malott's role to a second straight title. Now, Wes told us last night, this is a key moment for him in a match. Mentally, he feels like he can anticipate making the move he needs to after an open frame. Had a washout last week, and he made the right adjustment. Can he do it today? Well, he's going to do it right now. Ooh, that's way high, and another disastrous split. Well, at least I thought he was going to make the move now. But I guarantee you one guy who's going to make a move, and that's Billy O'Neill. He just watched two balls in a row go high. That ball never got to the right. And, of course, with all that power from West Malott, there's no way it's going to hold line. 3-7-10 ready. Could this be a second straight open? No! 
because West Malak picks that up. Tremendous conversion of a difficult split. Part of the advantages of being able to throw a big hook ball, number one, you've got a swing that dictates the ball going to the right, and number two, you've got all those revolutions to make it hook back. A lot tougher split conversion for a guy that throws it straighter. Bill O'Neill faced some unbelievable pressure. As he strikes again over the summer at tour trials, he was the 10th and final spot. In fact, it went down to the last shot. Uh, total pinfall, Randy, you know it very well because you went through it yourself, finished 13th in suburban Chicago yourself. He is the youngest player on tour, as we talked about. A big win down 0-2 to Eugene McCune in the round of 16, and then the win over Mike Devaney. And earlier we were talking about advice he got from Devaney, Devaney and Jim Tomek Jr. They said to him in the paddock after his round of eight match. And a strike. They told him it's just bowling on TV. Don't worry about the lights. Don't worry about the interviews. Don't worry about ESPN. It's just the game. Yeah, and again, when we talked to him last night, you know, he basically answered his own question. The bottom line is don't think. Just bowl. Wes Malott, with his unbelievable run, is the top-ranked bowler in the world. Second straight week. Rebounds nicely. 60 feet to success for Wes. But with back-to-back -back opens, can he rebound? As he gave O'Neill tremendous opportunity early in the match. This is a key point. He's got to stay clean. One of the things that players talk about week in and week out, whether it's qualifying, TV, match play, is transition. And that's when the lanes start to break down. Every time a bowling ball is thrown down the lane, it picks oil up off of the lane, and it causes the lanes to change. When you get caught up in transition, you do what Wes Malott did in the thir third and fourth frame. He wants to make sure everything is right. Didn't like that rack. Well, the run it's been for West. Ninth place finish in Japan. Beat Mike Wolf in Tulsa, lost to Tommy Jones in the final. Then beat Patrick Allen last week, the reigning player of the year in Denver in the semis. Nearly rolled 300. Then beat Mika Kovanemi in the final. You couldn't find a hotter bowler, but a couple open frames may do him in in his match with TV, PBA rookie. Bill O'Neill from Levittown, Pennsylvania, near Philadelphia. We'll have more of this semifinal when we return to Omaha. The Denny's PBA Tour Greater Omaha Classic on ESPN is brought to you by Denny's. We're cooking now. By Dexter, where you can play with the pros. Enter to win at DexterShoe.com. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Motel 6, official lodging partner of the PBA. For the lowest price of any national chain, go to motel6.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Greater Omaha. Council Bluffs just across the Missouri River where the Lewis and Clark expedition started back in 1804 on their quest to find the gateway to the Pacific Ocean which, as we know, they found. Speaking of history, how about Wes Malott last week in Denver, Colorado, nearly became the 17th bowler in PBA history to roll a 300 game on TV against reigning player of the year, Patrick Allen, a 299. He was extraordinary. This was for his 300, and he did just miss it. But the bottom line over Mika Corvinemi, he was able to knock off Major Mika and win his first ever PBA title and raise that trophy for the first time. What a feeling it was for Wes Malott. Well, speaking of history, Randy, unbelievable run for him. Four straight TV shows, never done on the PBA tour before. How would you best describe the run here for Wes Malott? Well, it, what he's doing is an enigma. I mean, it, you know, Walter Ray did it a couple years back when he made five shows in a row. And any time a player does this on the PBA tour, all the other players are kind of gathering around, really scrutinizing what that player's doing to try to figure out the trick. The bottom line, Wes Malott is matching up perfectly week in and week out, no matter what the pattern is. He's loose, and that spells trouble for his opponents. 
but he's got his hands full right now with Bill O'Neill. Bill O'Neill, the front five, what a start for him. He's the subject of this week's Dexter Pro Trend. Billy O'Neill is a heavy rolling guy, but there's a couple of keys to his success. Notice the backswing here. Now, he told me if he gets quick in the downswing, that spells trouble. So he really has to wait on it. But what makes Bill O'Neill so successful is look where this hand position is at the bottom of the swing. I try to teach all my students this. Fingers to the inside part of the bowling ball. So what does this release create? Well, take, check this out. Notice how the hand rolls right up the back of the ball. And listen, this ball hit the pocket. Wow. That's power, rotation, and revolutions, my friend. And ready, it is the Motel 6, sixth frame. Bill O'Neill is still on the front five with a strike here in the sixth. And earn $600 for Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA. They'll also be eligible for a $6,000 bonus if he throws the front six more than any other bowler on TV this season. The real deal has some fans here. <laughs> he went he to college in Michigan. Division II level school and was a standout there. No. Seven pin. Breaks the streak. Well, and good shot, too. And the one thing that Bill O'Neill is doing right now is, again, he's managing transition and he hasn't gone high yet. That ball comes in just a little late, leaving the shaker seven. But again, right out of commercial, the one thing you don't want to avoid is getting soft, not anticipating the lane breakdown or the oil breaking down comes in light instead of going high. Well, that happened sometime, his first non-strike on TV in his career. <laughs> yeah. Great start for Bill O'Neill, who brought the Saginaw Valley State Collegiate team to the national championship round. They lost to Kansas in the IBC. He said being on television, the pressure of that match, plus the tour trial pressure he's faced, will bring him somewhere close to this level of intensity he faces today. Yeah, and let's not forget what he did at last year's US Open. The guy finished sixth, he was two spots out of making the show. Ooh, there's a high ball right through the nose. And he looked puzzled. Yeah, and, and again, that's the, the stuff that I'm talking about, the transition, the oil breaking down. It happens much faster on TV day because of the heat and the lights. And you see that this ball never moved to the right because of the friction that's being created by the balls going down the lane and the TV lights. Again, something that Bill O'Neill is not familiar with, being only his first time on television. Can't cover an open frame. Three pin stands for O'Neill. Milan had two opens earlier in this match, and now O'Neill answers with one of his own. And this late, and that could really spell disaster. All of a sudden, Malat looks for the turkey here. Is down 19 pins. He can pull to within nine. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Bill O'Neill just got off of West Mallott's chest, and he can now breathe. It's a big opening to give a guy who is red hot. Mallott answers. It's a nine-pin match. You know, not only what it does for West Mallott's confidence when he sees his opponent open, but what it does mentally to a guy like Billy O'Neill, who has never been here before. And then West does what great champions do he gets up and strikes we asked west last night do you feel unbeatable are you invincible he said no remember this one of my first tv match in tulsa my first tournament last week however he's feeling confident he could say that much wow. west malak could have taken the lead with a strike there and right now the guys are just leapfrogging one another meaning that as soon as he somebody sees somebody go high the other player makes an adjustment off of that and gets left of them. Both players playing a similar part of the lane. Randy, last night West told us his concentration, focus has been unbelievable. Ball selection excellent. Making the right decisions. So the pin numbers, you see him. Can he make the right decisions, right moves down the stretch of this match? Without question. I think, I think he will make the right decisions. You know, and it's easy to make those decisions when you're matching up well and you don't have to try to throw the ball like somebody else or, or try to manufacture a shot that's not part of your arsenal. It'd be like telling Wes Mallott to take one of his fingers out of the ball and throw it straight up five. You know, that's just not what he does. Rebounds very nicely, our young rookie. Off of the open frame, join us next week for the USBC Masters, our first major of this season from the U.S. Cellular Arena in Milwaukee. $100,000 on the line, a two-year Denny's PBA Tour exemption as well next Sunday, 1 Eastern. 
More log on ESPN.com. We can't wait for that one. And right now, Dave Ryan, this is the biggest shot of his young professional career right here in the ninth frame, the foundation frame with a strike here. He'll take a 20-pin lead, and then no matter what Wes Malott does, he can't shut out Wes. However, that does not happen, Randy, at all. Double wood and a 10. 2, 8, 10. Well, he went high the last shot on that lane. He makes the adjustment. And here's the thing, you get too firm when you move into that oil, and the ball never grabbed down the lane, and now he is in big trouble. Thank you, Burton. No, 10 pin stands in open frame. That may spell disaster for O'Neal this late with Wes Malott going so well. Well, Wes Malott is going at a 215 pace. Bill O'Neill can strike out to shoot 223. The only way for Bill O'Neill to win this match is to have Wes Malott not double in the ninth and 10th. Wes told us last night, Randy, he's trying to take advantage of O'Neill's first ever TV match. Maybe be nervous. Maybe he wouldn't make the right shots. <laughs> Wes shreds the rack there, takes care of all 10. And all of a sudden, he takes the lead. Seems like he's just down by 30 pins. Well, if Wes Malott strikes here and goes nine spare in the 10th, he's going to win. If he does not strike here, Bill O'Neill can get up in the 10th frame and double and win this match. Look out, way high. Where did that come from? Mm. And Billy O'Neill's gonna get the finish on his good lane, uh, the lane that he struck every ball on, except for the sixth frame. Wes Malott, again, you can see that right now the trouble lane is the left lane. Top-ranked bowler on tour. Second in points to Mike Scroggins. Wes Malott, big shot again. Covers. All right, now, Wes Malott gets nine or a strike. He will force Bill O'Neill to throw two strikes in the 10th frame and get count to advance. You want to talk about pressure. This young man is a tremendous bowler. You're going to see a lot of him, but he has never felt pressure like he's going to feel getting up in the 10th frame. Clears the deck. And now it's up to young Bill O'Neill from Levittown, Pennsylvania, just 24 years old. That's what he needs. In the tour trials, seven bowlers in that last day, placed between 6 and 12. Only 10 could make it, 45 pins within each other. O'Neill came through that day. Can he do it again now? Late hit! A little love from number four. Number four drops, and she drops late. He gets this ball in just a pinch, but all those revolutions in that roll gets the ball to tip just hard enough to carry that late four pin. Now, right now, don't think about anything other than just being smooth and clean. Strike and three. Needs to strike. Bingo. Gets it. Great, great shot. He got this ball a little bit further right. It flipped up nice and hard, and with all that power, the 10 pin didn't stand a chance. All he needs to do now is stay behind the foul line. That's it. And just like that. Good job, baby. Finish it up. The four-time collegiate All-American who has never been on TV before today, Bill O'Neill, defeats the hottest bowler in the world, Wes Malott, 223 to 215. We've got much more coming up, including this week's edition of the Skills Challenge. Oh, yeah, it's Chris Barnes against the lefty Jason Couch, two great PBA Tour champs. And we will see some incredible shots by Barnes. Can he make the Flying Eagle? We'll find out.
We are back in Omaha, returning to Council Bluffs. The first time since the 2003 opener, won by Robert Smith. West Watt lost to O'Neill. Graber and Machuga are next, the other semifinal. We're set now for the PBA Tour Skills Challenge. Head-to-head -head matchup, Jason Couch, Chris Barnes. We are ready for this week's edition of the PBA Skills Challenge. Round of 16 match, Barnes and Couch. Chris Barnes broke through his first ever major championship, one of his six Denny's PBA Tour career titles last year. New Jersey in February. He won the Skills Challenge last year. Randy is 7-10 with two balls. This is tough. Two 16-pounders. Oh, that's really close. Yeah. Not just close, Chris. Nails it. Unbelievable. I mean, he makes this look easy. It's all about the hand position and how you're holding those two balls. You can do it! I think my kids have a couple of balls left over there from earlier. You can throw theirs if you Thanks. want. Yeah. Chris Barnes having a lot of fun at Jason's expense. He's got that pink <laughs> spare ball, Randy. How I much does that. that weigh? Yeah, it's about a six-pounder. Good call. Be the first guy the rest getting tipped today. Wow, even some Redskin humor. Jason Couch, a huge Washington Redskins fan, and that one is nowhere near. Oh, it doesn't even get one of the pins. <laughs> That's it. Kick the ball. Kick the uh, foul light there, Jason. That's about all he'll do to help him out. And Chris Barnes has a one-strike-to-none lead, needs three strikes okay. to win. Yeah. 4-5-10 here for Couch. We're hunting wabbits. <laughs> if he makes it, Barnes has got to respond. Ten stands. <laughs> wow. It's not even funny. Is it, it was Barnes close. Sunday today? Chris. That about was, as close as you can get try. without making it right here. Jason needed to catch <laughs> a little bit more of that five pin. Charter territory. Play defense, chair. Opposite on, hand. <laughs> yeah. Jason Couch hoping for some help from the chair. Got to go right, through it. it. This doesn't really matter. With the left. Oh, Lane level nice. angle. One more. Almost. And there it is. God, man. Can you be any luckier? Jason will now attempt the same shot oh, right here. You don't want to try this, this against Chris close. Barnes. He's about the best left-handed player yeah, on I'm tour or yeah, opposite hand right. player. I, I, it's, I'm going to hit the chair. I'm impressed. You want me to catch so it? Now Couch has got to go right-handed and get at least nine. You could get it closer to that camera guy. Maybe we could hit him with it. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Grab Good the chair. Good luck. He's got no chance. Not optimistic, is he? Yeah, for good reason. Got the chair into the gutter. Gutter ball. And gutter that's two now. strikes to Don Barnes. I'll tell you, you can pick the next one. Which one do you want to see? I had a feeling. Overwhelming response, Randy. The Flying Eagle. Can you make the shot? Is Scotty sure he wants that camera right there? <laughs> There's one As pin up wish. lane. You have the seven pin on one lane. Now the pin up front on the left lane has got to deflect well, over to the know, other lane and nail the other 10 pin. pin. up front, we're going to make it jump over the two, over the lane, hit the 10 pin, the ball's going to hit the seven. Dave, I tried this once and I sent that pin up there, right up underneath the masking unit, shattered the pin deck light. He got it! Oh, the flying eagle, Chris Barnes! And Jason Couch knows he is in trouble. <laughs> the you know, Florida Chris, State Chop. Chris has practiced this one a lot. Look how good this is. This is done absolutely perfect. <laughs> Sending that front pin over to take the 10 out. Just so you know, Jason Couch is a huge Florida Gators fan. That's why we saw oh that boy. Tallahassee Chop for Florida State. So the opposite lane, of course, because Jason Couch is lefty. Can he? Oh, that's got to hook a lot. Yeah, not enough. You got to somehow kick that pin over to the other lane, Jason. And Barnes waves it a sweep. Really that looked like the flying here. buzzard. A three-nothing win for Chris Barnes. He's off to the round of eight. We're in Milwaukee next week, so we will not have a skills challenge for you. But in two weeks, it returns. Norm Duke and Joe Ciccone should be a great matchup between those two PBA. Tour stars. 
Our next semifinal is see who faces Bill O'Neill in the final from here in Greater Omaha. Machuga and Traber head to head. And Mike Machuga says he loves Thunder Bowl in Council Bluffs because the last time he was here, 2003, he made the finals. He lost that one to Robert Smith. It was the first time in PBA history a winner of a tour event would become exempt. And Rapid Robert, who throws it so hard, lost it through there to get a big victory. Machuga lost that match, 244-187. He's in the semis again today. Amongst our four finalists, just five total titles here in one major. That one in 1994 by Dave Traber, the PBA Nationals. He's getting set to take on Mike Machuga now to see who gets the right to bowl against Bill O'Neill in the finals. So the other semifinals now joined by Randy. Thanks, Dave. Mike Machuga finished second here in 2003. And Mike, you said that this place was kind of like your home away from home. How is it that you're able to have so much success in this center? Uh, I think this place plays a lot like my favorite bowling center back home in Erie, Pennsylvania, Rolling Meadows. And uh, it, uh, it promotes long arm swings, very loose arm swings, and good, good ball speed. And uh, these fans here in Nebraska, Iowa area, I can't compare you to Erie, Pennsylvania, but you guys are loyal. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Good luck. David, you're kind of the elder statesman of the four guys on the tour today, or on the show today. Uh, the guy with the most experience, the old guy. Uh, how are you going to be able to use that to your advantage today? Well, I'm not going to worry about them. If I have the most experience, I'm just going to worry about what I have to do and not them. Because I don't throw it like them, so I'm going to just do what I have to do. Best of luck, Dave. Thanks. <laughs> Dave Ryan, two contrasting styles. A guy that's known for going very straight and a guy that likes to hook it. All right, Randy, see his set. Traber Machuga, second semifinal. Well, Denny's PBA Tour exemptions. 16 event champs, four major champions. The first major is next week in Milwaukee. And you see the remaining exemptions also available. Mike Machuga has never won on tour. Fifth year coming to us, as he mentioned, from Erie, Pennsylvania. He lives about a mile from that bowling center. He just loves the field there. He's had so much success here in Omaha as well. Even though Mike Machuga is a high rev player, and we talked about contrasting styles, you know that Dave Traber is only going to play, play the lanes one way, and that's real hard and straight and direct. Mike Machuga is very versatile, learning that from the Brian Voss Norm Duke camp. He can play the lanes any way he wants. Ten pin for the guy that called Chugs. He was a very close friend with Norm Duke. And brings us back to Dave Traber. Randy, your former roommate on tour, you guys are very close. It's been a long time since Dave has won. He does have the four titles. But it's 140 events without a victory. And if you're wondering why he's my former roommate, well, he ne he never let me play with remote control. So. <laughs> Always hog that remote, huh? Yeah, he's a big remote hog. Early on, you know, Dave, when Dave gets fired up, when he gets pumped up like he is now, he's going to throw it harder and harder. And sometimes, Dave, speed kills. He takes care of his single pin conversion, leading us to the ace hardware matchup, Machuga and Traver. Mike Machuga is still looking for his first ever career victory. Dave Traver's got four wins out here. Again, Dave playing to his strengths. This pattern allowed him to go nice and straight from outside. Mike Machuga did a little bit of everything. He hooked it when he wanted to. He went straight when he thought he had to. He stopped just in the nick of time, Dave Traver. His last victory, by the way, February 14th, 1998. It goes that far back. PBA Peoria Open. He knocked off Walter A. Williams Jr., the Hall of Famer. Still chasing that elusive 41st title of Tyrell Anthony's record. The final in that match was 248-229. And you see Mike Machuga, who has made three finals, has made the championship match three times, but never won. Maybe it changes here in Council Bluffs today. High flush strike. Mike Machuga. Well, that looked a little left of target, but because he's going really firm 
with his hand directly behind the bowling ball, that controls direction of change down the lane. So even though it was a little left, there's a little oil there to hold the ball online. 21st on the PBA Tour in average. He's fourth in the PBA Points Tour right now. Tenth last year to earn his exemption because he didn't have that victory. But he had a very consistent season to be that high in points. He just didn't like it all the way, and that's right through the nose. Mike, good. Way boy. high. This is pulled all the way, and when you pull the ball, it's normally a sign of being just a little bit too pumped up. You get a little quick, a little fast, a little pull in the downswing, and that makes the ball go left. Three, six, ten. Covers nicely. Oh, I think I missed that one last time on TV here. Well, that's an improvement then, Mike, if that's the case. Mike told us last night he loves to throw the ball hard. Right, we hear some grunting out of him, like Nolan Ryan throwing a fastball because of the conditions. He can really throw it hard. Sometimes you get too pumped up, though. Well, yeah, and you know, this week he threw it really hard, and, he, and I asked him why he was going so firm and so direct this week. He said, well, I watched Eugene McCune in the pre-tournament qualifier, and that's what he was doing, and it looked pretty good. Are you kidding me? No, that's 7-10. You know what, right before we went on the air for our interview, that was the last thing Dave left in practice on this very same lane. And that's just bad luck. Only done three times in tour history. He's got a chance to be done this week, too. So a lot of split conversions this week. Pins flying out of the back. Should Jess stay rook, 91. In Tucson, Arizona, still the third and final. PBA bowler on TV to convert the 7-10. And the first guy ever? Mark Ross. That's right, 1980, Alameda, California. Resume for Dave Traber, long career. That's oh, all. Wow. That's a break. That's payback for over there. That is certainly payback, Dave. One bad break, he gets one great <laughs> gift. Dave told us it's so unusual to be on a TV show where he's the elder statesman. He answered that question to you before. I'm trying to worry about what they're doing, but he told us last night, hey, usually I'm facing an Amleto Monticelli, as he did last year at Akron, and then won by that Hall of Famer, Walter Ray Williams Jr., or Pete Weber, and Norm Duke. Now, he's the most experienced. Can that work to his advantage? <laughs> Great pin action for Mike Machuga. That was where we were. Eight non-exempt qualifiers, including Eugene McCune, the bowler you just mentioned. Chris Hayden, who's won on tour in Orlando a couple years back, left-hander. Ryan Goble, of course, made the TOC. Last year, Lonnie Walchek's won a couple times. Hugh Miller had that exemption. And Randy Peterson, you came so close, didn't you, buddy? Yeah, I missed by one pin. Mm. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for bringing up my nightmare again. <laughs> I was prompted, by the way, folks, by Randy to talk you around that moment. And I'll say this about Mike Machuga. When he was introduced at the top of the broadcast, he got the biggest round of applause. And in the commercial break before the interview with he and Trevor, some trick shots from Machuga. Well, obviously, Dave, his carry was pretty good the entire week. I mean, he bowled fantastic all week long. Great run through match play. And now, from TV day, his carry stinks. So now ESPN, the latest chapter in one of the NFL's fiercest rivalries. The Browns and the Steelers. Van Roethlisberger is out. He's not playing. He's going to be Charlie back for a second straight week off the scope knee surgery. He should be back next week for the game against the Ravens. Brown Steelers coming up tonight. Saturday Night Football here on ESPN. Traver, seven pins. Imagine that with these pins. That's really a shocker. Bowling. That's really a shocker. Deficit grows for Traver, who comes to us from 
the Illinois-Wisconsin border, north of Chicago, in Hebron, Illinois. Well, let's see, he had a blower 710, and then he had a ring and 10, and here's a little salt to put in the wound that's already getting bigger and bigger. Takes care of a seven pin. He's 16th in the PBA rankings this year is Dave Traber, but now he's in a 23 pin hole to Mike Machuga, who is the hometown favorite here. Boy, they love him in Council Bluffs in Omaha, Nebraska. He goes for his first career title next. The Denny's PBA Tour Greater Omaha Classic on ESPN is brought to you by Ace. Ace is the official hardware store of the PBA. Ace, the helpful place. By Pepsi, the official soft drink of bowling. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Greater Omaha Classic Thunder Bowl, Council Bluffs, Iowa, just across the Missouri River from Omaha, Nebraska, home of the College World Series. A wonderful baseball tournament held here every June. <laughs> Mike is <laughs> chewing the crowd to quiet down. I like that. And they listen. He's controlling the crowd. He sure is. I'm impressed. Strike here gives him a 33-pin lead after six. This for a turkey. Sixth pin, Machuga. Sixth frame, Machuga. There it is. Traber knows he's in trouble now. He's got bad pin carry, and he's down by 33 pins. Soon to be 43 if Mike Machuga strikes here. Other oh, finisher is bottom of your screen there. You saw Pete Weber had an unbelievable match, as we told you. A round of eight with Wes Malott. Some are calling that the best match they've ever seen in person. Now, that's quite a statement. There are people around the PBA Tour, of course, who not only the bowlers, but ball reps, broadcasters, and they've seen some great ones. That would be a phenomenal statement. <laughs> Late hit. Down goes number 10. The late 10. Mike Machiga thought maybe it was a little left. Carries that late 10. Dave Traber now, in my opinion, must strike situation each and every frame from here on out. In a huge hole. And that's high, and that's a four pin, and Dave not pleased with the carry. One reason, we have different pins. Different pins today than we used all week long in qualifying. And what happens is when you get bad carry as, as a player, you start to try to make adjustments for pin carry. And when you do that, you lose the pocket. $40,000 plus that one-year exemption. That is so big for a guy like Dave Traver. Told us last night, just want to get through it early in the year. Get my exemption and be clear for the rest of the season. I can relax and enjoy the bowling. Doesn't look like that'll happen today. That's high. But some late pin action and help. Gets him a break with number 10. You can get on this. <laughs> and he's in a massive hole. Machuga is working on a four-bagger here. And go up 54 pins with a strike. Yeah, and that strike there, no consolation because, you know, that that strikes, but his perfect ball gets eight. And another great shot that he throws goes solid seven. So Dave Traber all but done in this match unless something happens or something unusual happens with Mike Machuga. But he looks dialed in. Machuga has not won a title in his first 79 career. Denny's PBA Tour events. Oh, we almost had a 7-10 to deal with. The 10 stands for Mike. Looks like a, another really good shot here. And in, in this ball oh gosh, looks like it hits like it weighs about like 12 pounds. He told you he's been a runner up three times in his career. Greater Cincy Classic in 01. Here at the banquet open in 03 last year to Brian Voss at the Orange County Classic to wrap up the first half of the 0405 season. And Mike is quite a character. He's got unbelievable personality. Case in point, his famous shot. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes all the way down lane. That, of course, was not in an actual PBA event, thankfully, or a TV show, but a pro-am. And he wowed the crowd that day. Who's the idiot laying underneath it? I can't imagine it would sacrifice their body. Oh my life. God. Looks familiar, though. 
That's your guy. Messenger will not take out the 10. Come oh, on, Michael, you gotta stay aggressive. Well, he's doing what he's doing, though. Staying out of trouble, keeping the ball in play, and leading himself spares that he can make. And right now, if he just stays clean, ninth and 10th, the best Dave Traver can shoot is 216. Michael be in the 220s. He's scared of 10 pin. One reason he's such a popular bowler here. For two years, he attended the University of Nebraska and bowled for the Huskers. So he's still got a lot of fans from his collegiate days. Right now, let's just see if Dave Traver can actually get his first strike on the right lane. Oh, that tap and number 10 will we wiggle and stand. Amazing. Now, you know, David did what he had to do this week. He knew he was going to be bowling on a pattern that was very conducive to his style. He's a part of a dying breed. There's not a lot of guys out here that throw straight anymore that have much success. But to his credit, when he does get his look, he takes full advantage of it and almost always makes television. This match is over. 42 pin lead now for Machuga. He will, in fact, advance to his fourth TV final and a chance to win his first ever title. Now, those three appearances in a final without a title are actually the most amongst exempt bowlers on the PBA Tour right now. Three tries and no championship yet. Perhaps that changes today. Mike Pachuca, star bowler at Nebraska, will take on Bill O'Neill, the 24-year-old rookie who was a big star at Saginaw Valley State in Michigan. It's all right. A four-time first-team All-American. You see what Mike there, did there in the tech frame? He moved in, the match is over, so now he's looking at another possible angle. And he only, he only bowled 220, and that may or may not be enough to beat Bill O'Neill, but he wants another option to go to. Ooh, look at that ball change. Long ball for Dave Traver makes the ball change, and it read it perfectly. The guy they call Chudes is through. Do they love him here in Council Bluffs or what? He'll take on Bill O'Neill in the final. The Seal wins a PBA title coming up. Special thanks to Dick and Brenda Stevens, general managers of Thunder Bowl here in Council Bluffs, Iowa, just across the state line from Omaha, Nebraska. We are coming here from Thunder Bowl. Great crowd, many of whom are rooting for Mike Machuga, the former Cornhusker. University of Nebraska bowling star win his first ever PBA title. He'll take on Bill O'Neill, the rookie in a title match coming up. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire crew. Glad to have you here from Greater Omaha. We've got football coming your way. Sunday night action on ESPN. Romeo Cornell's Cleveland Browns rolling to Heinz Field to try to knock off Heinz Ward. And the Steelers' coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Brown Steelers also available in high def on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. I hope it cracks. I hope it cracks. the Denny's PBA Tour. We are at U.S. I don't, I don't Cellular that, Arena. Track. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, next week, it's an arena show. And our first major, MF Bolero Lanes, that's where the competition will be held near Milwaukee up to the finals, which are on TV. And the program tickets are available on PBA.com. Chicago Classic comes up Thanksgiving weekend from Vernon Hills. Looking forward to going back to that great bowling center outside the Windy City and the programs, the 23rd and 26th, also from Vernon Hills. When we come back, history made. Someone wins his first ever Denny's PBA Tour title. Either Bill O'Neill or Mike Machuga. Will it be the former Husker or the former Cardinal? We'll find out. So who will it be? Mike Machuga or Bill O'Neill, the rookie, 24 years old from outside Philadelphia to win their first respective Denny's PBA Tour title in the final. That is coming up. Now, Randy Peterson, let's go back to Union City, California, Northern Cal. 1986, your first ever PBA Tour title. What were the kind of things going through your mind that day to try to win that first championship? So long ago, Dave, I, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But 
honestly, uh, it was a different format, stepladder format, and I qualified fifth, and, and I went, had to go through the field to win my first title. So I had some, a lot of momentum, actually, uh, when I got to the title match. But again, you know, the bottom line is, is when you get into a situation when you're trying to win, either for the first time or for the 30th time, the bottom line is you can't think. You can't overthink it. You know, when, when other things start creeping into your, into your head, except the matter at hand, which is just to get up and do what your body's trained to do, you have, tr you have problems. So just don't think. Mm. Just let it happen. We'll see which one is able to overcome all the jitters here trying to win their first ever PBA title. Randy, let's check out the GEICO Championship Recap. Okay. In semifinal number one, Bill O'Neill defeated Wes Malott by the score of 223 to 215. David takes down Goliath. And in semifinal number two, Mike Machuga defeated David Traber by the score of 225 to 184, setting up a great championship match for the Denny's PBA Tour Greater Omaha Classic. Well, Michael Chu got a good run last year, becoming exempt with his finish on the points list. Wes Malott, the leader right now. We lost to Bill O'Neill, a bit of a surprise in our first match, but Chuga number four at the moment. Tommy Jones, of course, has been so hot. And speaking of Tommy Jones, congratulations to he and his wife, Kristen. Yes, congratulations. The arrival of little Ella Claire born this week. Absolutely, congratulations, Tommy, Kristen. Enjoy your wonderful little bundle of love. Back home in South Carolina, that's where Jonesy is now. And Bill O'Neill is right here in Council Bluffs, Iowa, as he gets some help and strikes on his first ball on his first ever TV final. We had the last time we had two non-titleists meet in the championship match, 2004 Japan Cup. That was Tommy Jones' victory there. His first victory. Mm -hmm. He's been right out of course since. The last time on ESPN, 2002 Greater Casey Classic. Michael Gaither, Patrick Healy Jr. And Patrick won that one. 243, 227. It's been a while. Late help number seven, down for Machuga. Leading us to the final ace hardware matchup of the day, Mr. Peterson. A matchup of two non-winners on the PBA Tour, the rookie, Billy O'Neill, Mike Machuga with all the experience. And remember, he's been in the title match now for a fourth time. So you would think advantage Mike Machuga, but Bill O'Neill's got a lot of heart and a lot of game. We saw that statistic a moment ago. Walter Williams Jr., Brian Voss, Robert Smith are the three who have knocked off Mike Machuga. And he does have a fan club here. They have been rooting hard for him all day long. And he starts off with a double. We are going to have a new winner today, regardless of who wins this match. And that is going to knock out Doug Kent from the Dexter Tournament of Champions. He was on the bubble. Bill didn't like that much off release, did he? But a nice result. Well, when you let go of it, you go, oh, God, and then it ends up dead flush. That's a good sign. Normally, when I yell, oh, God, after I let go of it, I get six with a real ugly design, like a couple over here, a couple over there. You've had your run of success, too, partner. 13 titles, not bad. Well, thanks, Dave. They call this guy the real deal, Red Hot Rookie. Top break on a split. Yikes. 210. Wow. And he left a 2810 on that same lane against Wes Malott. <sighs> Was fortunate enough to win, but watch this ball gets down lane and just never grabs hold. Needs to slide the two over into the 10. Just misses. An open frame early for Bill O'Neill. Well, what the deal is, what he has to do on that left lane is he either has to move in and get softer and get the ball to go further to the right to pick up that dry, uh, the dry part of the lane, or he's got to move a little bit right and square up on that lane. I saw Mike Machuga on TV last year. Nace Arizona lost in the semifinal to the eventual champ, Mika Koivunemi. 192, 177. Perfect shot. 
Now, Matt Appearance was the second straight TV show made by Machuga, but he hasn't been on since. And now he's in great shape. A turkey to start. Well, he really liked that shot there. It ended up dead flush. And if you ever want to win your first title, it's not, it, you don't really want to have to go up against a Walter Ray Williams Jr. or Norm Duke, a Brian Voss, mm -hmm. a Parker Bone, Jason Couch. You want to win it against a guy who's never won before because Mike Machuga has been here in this situation. Bill O'Neill has not. What a start, Machuga, the front four. And a 34-pin lead on the rookie, Bill O'Neill. Could this be the day for Mike Machuga to win his first ever Denny's PBA Tour title? We'll find out. Exciting conclusion is next. The world's hottest bowler, Wes Malott, went down to Bill O'Neill in the first semifinal, and Mike Machuga took care of David Traver in semi number two, and there's Jukes in the green, hoping for his first ever PBA title today. Join us next week, the USBC Masters, our first major of the season from US Cellular Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. $100,000 on the line, and perhaps more importantly for a lot of the bowlers, a two-year Denny's PBA Tour exemption next Sunday, 1 Eastern. For more, log on ESPN.com. Competition up to the finals on TV will be at Bolero Lanes in suburban Milwaukee. Now that arena has hosted the Milwaukee Bucks in years past, also the Horizon League College Hoops Championships. It's a big time setting for our first major. O'Neill's down 34. Perfect shot, clears the deck in his fourth frame. despite being from Philly. And this is blasphemy for a lot of Philly people. He's not an Eagles fan. He roots for the, brace yourself, Redskins. <laughs> Told us last night he and Jason Couches. Bill's dad watches. He knows who Bill roots for on football field. Jason Couch, a big Skins fan. They watched the win over the Eagles last week. Oh! And his dad loves it. The atomic messenger. Atomic messenger. That thing came flying across. You know, he credits his father and his grandfather for all of his bowling accomplishments and why he's at the skill level he's at, as you see that head pin coming across and absolutely wiping out the 10. So his dad, his grandpa, his uncle, all very good bowlers, very competitive bowlers. Really got into it just before high school. But you got gets a late tap on number seven. With an answer of his own, the front. Five. Semi-final number one, watch how much straighter Mike Machigo is going, his hand staying behind the ball, up the board, we call that up the boards. Now, he didn't like that, so he moves way in, another 10 or 15 boards, gets his hand to circle around the side of the ball, brings his ball speed down, goes from going really straight to circling. Randy, it's the Motel 6, sixth frame. He's throwing the front five with a strike here. He'll earn $600 from Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA. Instead of split. That's the thing now. You heard him say he caught all that one. When you're looping it like that, you catch a little bit too much of it. The ball speed comes down, makes the ball break real sharp. Of course, he pays the price, leaving the 4-9. Four, the four Get the ball to the left side of the four pin, slide it over into the nine to stay clean. The door is open for Bill O'Neill. <laughs> Opens even further, the nine pin stands open frame. Can O'Neill take advantage? Well, we're gonna find out here in a minute, but with two more Love strikes, him. Bill O'Neill will tie this match. Bill told us he worked hard in the offseason, lost about 20 pounds, worked out with the weights, a lot of running, to be in shape for the end of the tournament, mentally and physically, for moments just like this. No. Nine pin. 
Boy, that was his opening too. That was his, his chance to get back in this match. Again, we talked about it earlier, the transition. This ball looks pretty good. Maybe a pinch to the right. It overhooks. And he knows, man, I needed that. I needed that. Spare here and strike in the seventh. You still got a chance. Takes care of his nine pin. Gets his mark, but that strike would have been huge. Out of the seventh frame for the rookie. The PBA's newly redesigned website, PBA.com, features an online store where you can purchase the newest PBA apparel and merchandise. PBA.com remains your best source for all the latest PBA news, including information about the Chris Barnes Youth Scholarship Tournament. Go to PBA.com and search Chris Barnes for all the details. All 10 down to the pit for Bill O'Neill. When you see the six pin go to the sidewall and cut the 10 out, that's really a good sign that your ball's entering the pocket the right way. It's been a long time. He has waited. Mike told us last night. Wes Malak got his first title. Bill O'Neill's bowled well. I want to win my first title. It's my turn. My time. 10 pin. Remember when I said the six pin goes to the sidewall and carves the 10 out, that's, that's telling you that your ball's entering the pocket the right way? This is exactly the opposite. This ball is going to enter flat. The six goes to the sidewall and lays dead in the gutter. That's all about revolutions and entry Rick's angle. Let's ask Blaze. At least Mike can have a. Moment of fun with the crowd here. Does have a 21 pin lead. But O'Neill in his eighth frame will be working on a strike. Well, I guarantee you, if Mike doesn't strike in the eighth frame and O'Neill gets up and throws two more for a three bagger, Machuga's not going to be talking a whole lot. Takes care of his mark. Tolis, he has felt focused in a great place mentally, so comfortable in these surroundings. And Council Bluffs, where he's had success before. So what, if he wins here, key to the city? I think so. <laughs> the former Husker. Twice at Thunder Bowls, made the finals. Can he win here? <laughs> Mas bueno. Right, O'Neill down 21 pins. Does work on a strike. Can cut it to 11. Ready, set. Eighth frame strike here. Foundation frame strike in the ninth. We've got ourselves a brand new ball game. Oh, oh, oh. That's one. Dave, in my opinion, right now. In order for Bill O'Neill to win this tournament, he must strike out 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. Beautiful shot here. He makes the adjustment, doesn't get it quite as far right, keeps his hand underneath the back, and do you think his father knows what the score is? Absolutely. That's a man who's done a lot of bowling over the years and who's instilled great values and a great game. Not only is Bill O'Neill a great bowler, but he's a great young man on and off the lanes. Big shot. We heard those very words from Wes Malott last week against Mika Kovunemi and forced Major Mika to double the tent. Mika could not do it. Wes had his first title. Maybe the same happens today. Right. A great shot thrown there now. Here's the deal. If Mike Machuga does not strike in the ninth frame, Bill O'Neill can strike out and win this tournament. Mike Machuga must strike in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh to shut out Bill O'Neill. Turkey for O'Neill. We're in seventh through nine. Wow. Puts the pressure right back on Machuga's shoulder. Huge shot. Well, that set up his 10th frame. But all that's left for Mike Machuga to do to win his first ever career title is two strikes and two pins in the 10th frame.
anything less, Bill O'Neill still has a chance to win his first ever tournament. Chuga, is he ever coming up in? Takes off his mic, <laughs> wants to be sure that everything will be Sorry, girl. perfectly in order to get these last pins, and it is a done deal. Mike Machuga has won his first ever title. Look at this! <laughs> now remember, that's not a foul because he didn't let go of it. <laughs> he did it on TV, folks! That's got to hurt. I can't believe it! He promised if he'd ever win on TV, he would try that move. Let's see. Oh my goodness. We want to see that again in slow-mo. Let's see, that is going to make Sports Center tonight. I guarantee you, <laughs> win your first title and then break your neck. The Machuga flop. And you're going to see a lot more of this kid right here, Billy O'Neill. He is awesome. He, he will be no flash in the pen. This kid can really play. Wow, that's what it's like when you win PBA tournaments. You get to kiss all the good looking girls. And a kiss from his girlfriend. And. Congratulations all around for Mike Machuga. And as he says, waited so long for this moment. 29-year-old from Erie, Pennsylvania. His fifth year on tour, his first ever tour title. Great job, buddy. And we have back-to-back -back first time winners. It was Wes Malott's day in Denver last weekend. Here at Council Bluffs, the moment belongs to Mike Machuga and the Machuga flop. There he goes. <laughs> I was hoping he'd go all the way down lane. We'll hear from Mike next. The Denny's PBA Tour Greater Omaha Classic on ESPN is brought to you by Dexter, where you can play with the pros. Enter to win at DexterShoe.com. By Denny's, we're cooking now. By Ace, the official hardware store of the PBA. Ace, the helpful place. And by Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA. For the lowest price of any national chain, go to motel6.com. Mike Machuga had gone 79 events without winning a Denny's PBA Tour title. That all changes today. The Greater Omaha Classic as he wins 256-245 a rookie Bill O'Neill. And now he is joined very happily, I'm sure, by Randy Peters. Thanks, Dave. Mike Machuga, your first ever title. How does it feel? Unbelievable. I can't even describe this. I've been waiting for this for so long and worked so hard that 
Gosh, I'm, I'm really glad it was back here, uh, back in the stomping grounds. Thank you all so much. You guys are the greatest. I got to ask you, how did you ever come up with the Mike Machuga flop? My, my dad has been known to do some uh, silly little tricks in the bowling center, and him and uh, Mr. Montgomery at home, on the, uh, you know, they, they used to do it in the Friday Night Mixed League, and, and I just took it to another level and decided that it was going to be my celebration, you know. NASCAR drivers, they do the donuts, and I know I might have been laying down there, but I'm not going to do backspins. And golfers, they throw their bowling ball into the stands, and I'm not, I'm not insured that way. So I just decided that diving down the lane was going to be my celebration. Well, Mike, congratulations. I don't, don't ever ask me to lay underneath you when you do that flop. Great job. Congratulations, Mike Machuga, your first ever PBA crowd. Dave? Randy, thank you. And Mike Machuga enjoys his first ever title. Raising the trophy, USBC Masters, US Cellular Arena in Milwaukee. It's our second arena show and our first major. It's coming up next week here on ESPN. Well, Mike Machuga told us in our interview with him last night that he felt so comfortable here in Council Bluffs. He had made the finals in 2003, lost to Robert Smith, the first exemption ever given out on the PBA Tour, part of our 64 exempt bowler field. He was certainly comfortable here today. The former Nebraska Cornhusker bowling star wins his first ever title in exciting fashion over Bill O'Neill. Congratulations going out to Mike Machuga of Erie, Pennsylvania. Now for the entire crew, my partner Randy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long. Be sure to join us again next Sunday, 1 Eastern here on ESPN, the USBC Masters from Milwaukee. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Coming up next on ESPN, figure skating. This was fun to watch. Machuga wins his first ever title, and what joy. What a response. And we certainly love the Machuga flop. He promised he'd do it. He did it. It was a thrill.